second video clip of chapter two is about the current exchange rate arrangement. Uh, before looking at these slides, we have actually slide of the exhibit 2.4. This is uh, much the exchange rate arrangement and monetary policy framework as of April 30, 2015, and there are a bunch of countries uh, uh, of the country's monetary policy framework. So based on these facts, going to explain each of them. Okay. So the first one is called the free fraud. Free fraud means that this is uh, about 33 countries allow market forces to determine their currencies. So it means that they do not intervene directly and they allow freely float their currency values. The managed float is basically the about 46 country combined the government interventions with market forces to the exchange rate. Now packed to another currency, usually such as to US dollars, many cases, or Euro, or there are no national currency. Some countries do not have their own currency. They use usually US dollars, such as Ecuador, Panama, El Salvador use dollars, and Montenegro and San Marino use the Euro. So this is kind of broad categories. Now we have more specific categories here. So first one is a no separate legal tender. It means that there's no currencies. They use another country currency, usually dollar, US dollar and or Euro, Ecuador, El Salvador and Panama. They use US dollars. So they don't have to uh, concern about the stability of their own currency, but they also cannot do any mon monetary policies. Now, second one, there's currency board system. Now, currency board system has the fixed exchange rate system combined with restrictions on each wing government. So basically, it eliminates central bank functions such as the monetary policies. Hong Kong, Bulgaria, Brunei is the example. So Hong Kong is the PAC system. They have fixed exchange rate system with US dollars, which means they actually do not have their own monetary system. They actually control the supply of the money based on the, the, the amount of dollars so that they can keep the, keep the fixed exchange rate. Now the third one is conventional PAC. So it's also the fixed to another country currency or some baskets of the currency. So baskets means uh, they set a number of major currencies and they pack to the exchange rate. So country buys or sells foreign exchange or uses other means to control the price of the currency, such as Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Morocco has the conventional PAC system. Stabilized arrangement is the spot market exchange rate that remains within margin of 2% of six months or, or, or more and is not floating. So Angola, Cambodia, Singapore, Lebanon, these countries, they set the 2% limit margins for six months and then they do not float anymore. The next one is chlorine pack. So like the conventional pack, the chlorine pack is just a small amount at a fixed rate of changes or in response to changing macro indicators. So Bolivia, Iraq, Honduras, Nicaragua are the countries that use a chlorine pack. So it's basically also the ex fixed exchange rate system based on the amount of uh, the dollars usually. And uh, it's very similar to conventional pack.
claw-like arrangement is also, it's, the exchange rate system must remain within a narrow margin of 2%. So it's for six months, an exchange rate arrangement cannot be considered as floating. This is not floating system again. Ethiopia, China, Russia is peg-like arrangement, and they they have kinds of minimum change, and uh, they try to stabilize the exchange rate. Now, peg exchange rate within horizontal band is also. The value of currency is maintained within certain margin, at least one plus one, minus one percent around the fixed central rate. So they change it, but margin is very small. The maximum probably, uh, the margin between the maximum minimum value of the change rate is two percent. Tonga is the only example. And other managed arrangement is kinds of the rigid yields and issue when the exchange rate arrangement does not meet the criteria, any other categories. So Algeria, Nigeria, Malaysia, they actually, you know, uh, frequently change the system, such as the Malaysia used to use the fixed and then they change the floating, they change the path, you know, so we cannot categorize that, but they managing it. So these are the countries that use actually fixed exchange rate and many countries actually manage their exchange rate within certain range uh, sometimes just to fix it. The major prob, uh, reason is they try to stabilize their currencies. They don't, do not want to have the volatility and these countries usually are less developed. Uh, there are countries that actually, it's not really developed country, but you know, well-developed country or quite developing country, but non-major countries um, like that is already developed. Now, floating exchange rate is largely market determined. They, uh, the foreign exchange market intervention may be either direct or indirect. So they can directly intervene or indirectly intervene, serve to moderate the rate of exchange and prevent undue fluctuation in the exchange rate. But policies targeting a specific level of exchange rate are incompatible with floating. Brazil, Korea, Turkey and India, they still, they are floating system, but the government sometimes intervene you know, um, the directly or indirectly. So they're the countries that actually trade a lot, you know, because the trade competitiveness is actually, is very related to the, the, the exchange rate. Now free floating is the countries that actually do not touch anything. So the, fl the floating exchange rate can be classified as free floating if intervention occur only exceptionally like the, and aim to address disorderly market condition and if the authority have to provide information or data confirming that intervention have limited to two, at most three instances in the previous six months, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's basically Canada, Mexico, Japan, UK, United States and Eurozone. The major currencies is free floating, government, do not intervene a lot. Their intervention is very limited so that we can actually trust the exchange rate. And that's why they, these currencies can be kinds of the major currencies. Like I don't think the Mexican peso is not major currency, but besides like they can, like Japanese yen, UK uh, sterling, like the US dollar, Euro, even Canada, Canadian dollars are kinds of the, are the major currencies. We trust their, the exchange rate because it's market driven, government does do not intervene a lot. No, besides these currencies, you cannot really trade it uh, when, I mean, you can you cannot use it as a, you know, base currency because uh, that the sole governments like the, the, you know, such as the Brazilian government, Indian government, Korean governments intervene, even, even though they keep the floating system, they basically intervene even indirectly to, change the exchange rate. Sometimes we are suspect that we are suspecting that they manipulate their current, you know, exchange rate, which increase the, uh, you know, like the, which increase the advantages of the trade. But sometimes if 
you do not like you try to intervene too much then the problem is it's very weak against the hedge fund attack we'll see that example like those these examples later like later of this chapter and if you keep the market just freely then market actually protect against these kinds of hatching funds attack but if government intervene quite often and try to manipulate or try to decide a certain level of exchange rate then they actually have to use a lot of money to keep it so uh, that's the pros and cons of the fix or managing or floating system 